Hi there, Lloyd Macedo. Speaking to you from LloydMacedo.com. Who is Lloyd Macedo and Think Personal Branding? The date is uh, uh, 7th August 2018 time right now. It's 3.26. Um, I got this question from uh, a young man who is based in India. Uh, he apparently admires me. He wants, surprisingly, wants to be a personal branding strategist. Okay. So he asked me, like uh, he booked a session and he asked me as to like, how can I become a, a personal branding strategist? So I asked him, how old are you? And he told me he was, uh, he was 19 or 20. Yeah. In that range. So, you know, so then I asked him, okay, so you want to be a personal branding strategist. So what do you, what do you want from my side? So it, his question was, how can I, you know, position myself as a coach, obviously, uh, get, you know, money and make money out of this. See, the, the thing is, when, whenever anybody wants to position himself as an expert or, let's say, in any field, let's say, Photoshop, Illustrator, Web Design, Digital Marketing, a DJ, Exercise, anything you want to position yourself. When you go to a customer, the customer will always ask you, okay, you, you claim to be this big guy, this big expert in this particular field. Show me what you have. Show me what you got. So if you're talking of bodybuilding, the guy would want to obviously see, do you have big size? Are you ripped? If you are positioning yourself as an athlete, he would want to see your track record or he would want to see your uh, laurels or medals. Let's say you, you position yourself as a DJ. Maybe they would want to see your gig or your demo CD or your video, uh, where you're performed. Um, and if you're talking as a business coach, as a branding strategist or whatever, this is where things get a little tricky. Because when you're talking about business, let's say you're going to somebody and saying, I'm going to increase your business. There was this guy. Uh, I don't want to take his <laughs> This guy used to admire me a lot. And, um, you know, he was searching for a job. He couldn't get a job. He tried for one to two years. Two years, huh? Tried to get a job. He couldn't get a job. He used to get a job here and there and just leave. So finally, he decided to, one fine day, position himself as a business coach, business branding strategist or something like that. And he started putting up videos um, telling me, Hello everyone, uh, this is your coach and today I'm going to tell you about sales. You know, he, he created a couple of videos. Today I'm going to tell you about business, what you should do, about product, about service. Fine, whatever. I'm not, I'm not trying to make fun of the guy, although it looks like I'm making fun of the guy. So, and he would put articles like sales, first identify your customer, Go to him, make the sale, close the sale, whatever. <clears throat> now, the problem here is <clears throat> what the person has done. Uh, it's hot water. Uh, what the person has done is he has given a lot of theory. Okay. Now, when you're going to a person, you know, I, I remember my, my mentor who was, um, uh, he was the managing director of a company that had a turnover of 11 million US dollars annually. You know, when people used to come to him and say that, uh, you know, I'm going to help you grow your business, he would immediately ask them, I make it a, I make an annual turnover of 11 million US dollars. What is your turnover? So if you are earning less than them, how are you going to help them make more than what they are making? That is their common logic. Like, for example, if I'm a bodybuilder, I'm absolutely, I'm huge, I'm big, I'm ripped. Unless you have an amazing track record of, incredible knowledge in terms of steroids, in terms of exercise, you have a PhD in exercise, you have spent years and years, you can't just turn up being skinny and a young guy and say, I'm going to teach you how to become Mr. Olympia, a world champion. It doesn't work that way because people are intelligent. If they give you $1, they value that $1. They're not going to give you just like that. Now, the question comes, what about me? I had to start somewhere, right? 
So I was not born as a personal branding strategist. I, I learned. Okay. So how did I do it? I'll, I'll give you some insight. So this can at least help you. When I started off as a coach, I knew for a fact that people would look at me and say, what is your track record? You know, you're talking so much. Where's your experience? And I didn't have experience. It makes no sense for a guy who's in his 30s. Those days, I, I, I started at 30, 35, 36. It makes no sense for a guy who's 35, 36, who doesn't have any money in the bank. That time, I didn't have any money. To go to a guy who is, let's say, in his 50s, someone who's 50 years old or 55, who has like, say, 5 million or 10 million or 20 million in his bank, for me to tell him, I'll tell you how to make money. No, it, it would be absolutely stupid. So I knew for a fact I had to specialize in something. So what I started to do was obviously aggressively start reading books, uh, go for seminars, go for training programs, go to coaches. And I started to identify what am I good at? What am I really good at? What really sparks? What really jumps across? So I, I knew public speaking, which was OK, but nobody wanted public speaking. That was a problem. Uh, and even if people wanted, they didn't pay good money. I knew a little bit of resume rebranding. I knew how to, you know, formulate smart answers for interviews because I used to give them as to sell myself as good in sales. So I said, okay, fine. I can start with resume rebranding, interview questions, public speaking, presentations, and uh, selling yourself because I was good at selling myself. So that's where I started. And I packaged all this all together and made it a module. Okay. And when people used to come to me, I would tell them that uh, this is what I can offer you, whereby I'll help you in resume rebranding, interview questions, um, selling yourself and public speaking. So that's what I started as something small. And obviously, since I didn't have any customer uh, and I didn't have a track record, I made it very affordable. I made it at $27. That's what I started off with. So I got my first customer. He said, OK, I can spend $27. It's not expensive. He was happy. I pushed to the maximum. I gave him outstanding service. And then he recommended two or three people. Then I did the same thing with those two or three people. And those two or three people introduced two or three more. And that's how it slowly started to evolve. Because I gave one person exceptional service and I went way beyond what anyone else would give. They were happy. But keep this in mind. Not every customer that I dealt with was a success. Some customers are, uh, you know, Loy, uh, you know, I know most of the stuff you're teaching, which is a fact. Some people knew. Uh, some people said, uh, you know, there's nothing new what you're teaching. So I asked them specific questions. Okay, which area do you, did you feel that was boring? Which area did you feel was of no value? Which area did you feel was, oh, I'm wasting my time? So they would identify. And if four or five people or 10 people would give the same feedback, uh, Loy, this particular point was not good. I would remove that. If people said, whoa, I loved this point and everyone highlighted or the majority highlighted this particular point, I would say, okay, this is my breadwinner. While this is not my breadwinner, this is the one that brings my value down. So over the period of time, I, I improved on my content, on my syllabus, on what I was sharing. And that's how I became better. Um, over the course of, I think, uh, six, seven years, of really reading a lot, really absorbing a lot, really going through lots of training programs, of paying people lots of money, lots. Uh, you'd not believe I've even paid like people up to $20,000 just for one month's training. I know it sounds ridiculous. Some of them were good, like in that range, some were just a waste of money, but it's trial and error. But I kept investing in myself because I wanted to be better. Until the day I realized I have understood the template of how these trainers train. And I started investing into books by myself, into MP3 programs, into online courses. The majority, to, to be honest with you, the majority of them are just vague and waste of time. But when you do get something that stands out, that becomes part of your arsenal. So once you get something new, let's say, for example, I learned something new in terms of personal branding. I experiment and I find out. Does this add value? Can I charge the customer more? Did the customer benefit from this? If the answer is yes, then I've upgraded myself to the next level. So that is how it goes and that is how you position yourself as an expert. But keep in mind, in order to be an expert in a particular field, 
you need to write about that particular subject. I've written two and a half thousand articles with regards to not only personal branding, but my own brand. I, I have 2000 plus videos um, with regards to myself and my brand and personal branding. Um, I have had more than 2000 plus customers and you can check the recommendations on LinkedIn and different other forums, even Facebook. Um, when I was in Quora, I spent, uh, I think six months, 12 to 14 hours a day, just writing free content of hundred answers per day. So when you keep doing this and now even this video, this is nothing but giving value for free. When you keep doing it over and over and over again, being consistent, doing it every single day. Eventually, people identify you as an expert in a particular field. Keep this in mind that not everyone is your customer. Uh, not everyone can afford you. Not everyone will like you. There will be out of, let's say, a thousand people seeing my video, for example, thousand, hundred will appreciate, maybe 900 will not. Out of the hundred who appreciate, 10 would send me an email and say, well, how much do you charge? Okay. And out of the 10, maybe one would be ready to pay me. So that is the um, you know, th that is the law of uh, numbers. That is the uh, law of averages. At least that works for me. Thousand people see my video, hundred uh, appreciate, ten send me a uh, business inquiry, one becomes my customer. So that is how you position yourself as an expert in any particular industry. But please keep in mind, if you start positioning yourself as, you know, I'm a digital marketer, I'm a DJ, I'm a exercise teacher, that is vague. If you position yourself as someone who's vague, you cannot stand out from the rest of the crowd. In, in my case, I obviously because I'm tattooed, I stand out. <clears throat> the way I speak is very in your face, pretty rude. I use profanity, uh, bad words. I talk about sex. I talk about uh, vagina, penises, boobs, uh, sex. You know, that's, that's me. That's my personality. So that's unique for a trainer at least then I'm not one of those motivational, you can do it. I say, no, fuck you, you can't do it. Uh, when when I feel things are no, I say no. So that position is, uh, positions me. And, you know, it's, it's like, for example, if you say I'm a DJ, who plays any music, that's you being vague. But if you say I'm a DJ who plays only at weddings, that makes you very specific. If you say I'm a DJ who plays for Punjabi weddings, that's even more specific. And if you say, I'm a DJ place for Punjabi music, for Punjabi weddings, but the high end or the medium level, say $1,000 to $5,000, that makes it ultra specific. And then you can add more. I'm a DJ who plays for Punjabi weddings for a budget of $1,000 to $5,000 with sound system and speaker. And I also have an MC. Uh, and I also have, um, you know, decor. So, and I also have recommendations and dancers. And more. so you make it very, very specific. Narrow down your niche. I'm, I'm just saying, like, don't, don't say I do all speakers, everything. Maybe you can say I only have JBL, two speakers, 10,000 watts or whatever. So narrow it down. Be very, very specific. Okay. When you are really very specific and to the point and a person can identify you, uh, you stand out from the rest of the crowd, then people would want you as an expert and follow you. Otherwise, if you're like everyone else, I'm a digital marketer. That's so bloody vague. I'm a, for example, if you're in digital marketing, how you can say it is, I'm a Google AdWords certified or Google certified professional who has worked with Google or who has worked who specializes only on Google or who specializes only on Facebook or specializes only on two platforms like Instagram. So whatever. Uh, so be as specific as possible. Target very specific customers. Like, for example, I target only people who have money. Anyone who's poor, no, thank you. I don't care. Anyone who's young, no, thank you. I don't care because young people don't have money. Um, so and let's say market. Age group, you need to know age group, you need to know gender, you need to know region. That's how even Facebook marketing is done. So that is how you position yourself as an expert. And once you do that, I'll tell you this, the sky's the limit for you. You will succeed, but it will take time. So I hope this gives you an insight into how you can position yourself as an expert in the industry and charge more money. Uh, it's a learning process. Uh, and the best way for you to learn is work with somebody who has experience I worked with my mentor who guided me from making 
you know, from preventing me from making those mistakes because before I was a DJ, anchor, I used to do shows, I used to speak in public, I used to train people, I used to do seminars, I used to do everything until he told me, Lloyd, you need to stop all this. You need to do just one, two, and three. And we were able to identify that and then say, out of the one, two, three, focus on one as A, you know, second one as B and C, just very vague, even price points, even the way I interact with people. So, uh, all these things you learn once you're with your mentor. So I hope this gave you at least a brief idea in terms of price points, in terms of uh, customer selection, in terms of how you position yourself and how you market yourself. So let me know if you have any questions. Put your comments down below. I'll always read them. Like the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't like it, give it a thumbs down. This is me signing off for now. And remember, my services, thinkpersonalbranding.com. Okay, take care.